Well, good Sunday morning to you. I am so glad you tuned in. I believe that God is going to speak to you and bless you this morning. God bless you. Let's go right on in. Good morning, Fireplace. Hope you guys are doing well wherever you are, whether you're at home or in your car, um, just wherever you may be. Um, we thank you so much for joining us and for tuning in on Facebook and on ESPN. Uh, man, we're just so blessed to be able to celebrate the presence of Jesus and the fact that he meets us where we are. Um, and we can do that as family. It doesn't mean that, you know, even, if, even as I'm looking out into this empty sanctuary today, um, I do know that um, the Lord is definitely with us um, in spirit and in truth. And we are meeting to worship him from where we live and from our homes. Guys, I love how last week Pastor Alvin talked about um, the grace of God and um, how he goes out of his way to show us his grace and to keep us um, in his hand and in his heart. And I do believe that um, with that, man, because he is so strong, because he is so mighty, because he is so powerful, um, man, the victory that he has won on the cross just opens the door for all of us to experience that in fullness. And so we're going to sing that today. We're going to declare that today. So if you want to stand to your feet as we enter into worship, um, and I'm just going to pray and we're going to jump in. God, thank you so much, Lord, that, man, the victory belongs to Jesus. God, we thank you so much, Lord, that um, victory is not just some kind of buzzword, God, in the church. Um, but Lord, but it is a reality. It is a reality for us, God, as sons and daughters of the Most High King. God, as we walk through this uncertain season, God, with all these changes around us, God. Lord, how, how fitting would it be, Father God, for the enemy to come and try to uh, steal our joy, to steal our peace, Father God, to, to destroy, God, that which you have started to build in some of our lives, God. And so we just pray, God, today, Lord, that the victory that you've won on the cross, God, that we would experience that in such a special way this morning, God. And so I cover each and every listener, God, would you come and have your way, Lord. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The victory is yours. Come on, sing the weapon. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Yeah. Oh my God will never fail. Come on, let's sing that again. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't breathe. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, yeah, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh. sing there's power there's power in the mighty name of Jesus and every war he wages he will win oh I'm not backing down from any giants cause I know how the story ends yes I know I know how this story Yes. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Yeah. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Take 
put the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good come on sing that out you take what the enemy meant you take what the enemy meant for and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy, you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, one more time, declare that. You take, you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant. Take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good, and I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see, and I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Yeah, for the battle. what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good, forever Jesus, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. You're in the business of redeeming. You're in the business of making things new. You're in the business of restoring. Oh, there is nothing unredeemable. And there is nothing unredeemable. There is nothing unredeemable, our Redeemer. God, there is nothing unredeemable. Oh, 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 you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good.
the saints. Holy, holy, holy is 
the Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 and holy are you. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh, holy, 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 ever holy are you. So worthy, 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 worthy. Lord God, oh, worthy, 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 oh, worthy are you, worthy, 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 worthy. is the Lord God Almighty, oh, worthy, 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 oh, worthy are you, one more time, sing, worthy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy, 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 oh, worthy, you worthy of it all. You worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Time sing, you're worthy. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. for giving us the opportunity, Lord, to enter into your presence, God, wherever we are, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that, God, we don't have to go to a building, Father God, to experience, Lord, the fullness of your presence, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that the fullness of your presence lives within us, God, so we can honor and exalt you, God, even from our homes today. God, we say that you are worthy, God. We say that you are exalted, you are lifted up, God, on the throne. Lord, we say that you are seated on the throne, God. You are seated on the throne. And so here we are, God, your sons and daughters, God. We sing praises, God, with the elders. We sing praises with the angels. God, we say that you are worthy, God. So be exalted this morning. God, we pray that as we continue throughout the service, God, that our hearts and our minds, God, we just continue to be in a posture, Lord, of, of glory, Father God, glory unto you, God, and giving you that glory, Jesus. God, you are worthy, you are worthy and forever worthy. So we love you, God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Can we sing that together one more time? We'll sing, we exalt thee. And we exalt thee. We exalt thee.
Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am so glad to see your faces, sort of, but I'm just glad you guys are all here that we can uh, interact with each other in the comment sections of these videos and that we're able to still be in touch with you guys. Um, I want to just remind you today about our small groups. They're still going strong, they're still a lot of fun, and there's still time for you to get involved. We've had a really great time just getting to be able to have people to talk to and just share what's going on in this time with our friends from church. So there, again, there's a men's group, a women's group, a board game group that's meeting virtually, and there's also a Couch to 5K group. So if you wanna get involved, go ahead and head over to fireplacechurch.com and click on the B Groups card on the website, and it will have all the information that you need to get involved. So definitely take the chance to do that if you can. And parents, go ahead and make your way over to fireplacechurch.com so that you can download and print out the PDFs so that they can be involved in the crafts and have the questions to continue to reinforce what they're learning on Sunday mornings. And another thing about the website, you can head over there again as well so that you can give this morning. I just wanna remind you how to get there and how to do that. So if you go to fireplacechurch.com and you click on the giving card and then click the give now button on there, it will take you to our online giving portal where you can use an existing account, make an account, or just give one time as a guest. That way, you can still be giving. You can also still send a check to Fireplace Church. We will get it. <laughs> um, so you can just send that over to 416 Allegheny Street in Blacksburg. And as we talk about giving this morning, I just want to say to you guys that everything that we do in working for the Lord has a purpose. Um, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58 it says therefore my beloved brothers be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord knowing that in the lord your labor is not in vain this is from a letter written to the people at the church of corinth written by paul and he's reminding them that their contribution in work that they give to the lord is not done in vain that there is a reason for it there's a purpose for it and this also applies when we give financially to the church. And the coolest thing about giving financially is that the impact that we leave when we choose to do that is eternal. Just think about all of the families that we've reached through Summer Splash and through VBS and all of these other events that we've put on. They have an eternal impact for those families. And they can only happen, it can only happen through having the ability to facilitate that financially. There are people all over the world that have been reached by missionaries that we support from the budget that we make in every month. And that impact is for eternity. And that is why we give financially. That is why we take up an offering every week. It's so that we have the opportunity to make an eternal impact in the lives of people in our community and around the world. And so Father, I just thank you this morning God, that you use what we give, what we are able to give, what we have and give to you freely, God, to impact eternity for people all over the world, in our backyard, everywhere, everyone we come in contact with. God, we are able to make an eternal impact in their lives. Lord, to lead them to you, to show them your love. God, and to reveal to them that you are good and you are love. So I just ask God that this offering, Father, would be used, God, to pr bring eternal impact into uh, people's lives. God, through whatever means that is, if it's through supporting missionaries or outreach events that we have, or just being able to put on church on Sunday morning, God, I pray that you will use this, God, and that we will receive the blessing for giving to you, God, that you have for your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good Sunday morning. I am so happy you joined us today. Man, if you are a member of Fireplace Church and you're a regular part of this body, let me just say, as your pastor, I miss you so much. I look so forward to the day that I get to see you again. And if you're not a member and you're just somebody who's tuning in on ESPN or YouTube or Facebook, man, I am so blessed and honored that you came and hung out with us this Sunday. I just introduce myself briefly. I am Pastor Alvin. I'm the pastor here at Fireplace Church in Blacksburg, Virginia, and we are so honored you've spent the Sunday with us digitally. And hey, we even look forward to getting to know you in person one day in the future. 
Lately, we've been talking about going deeper. Back in January, we really felt like we had this one word from God to go deeper. Going deeper both in our relationship with God and going deeper in our relationship with each other. And it's been really interesting how this uh, pandemic situation has actually helped to facilitate going deeper in God and interestingly enough, even helping us go deeper with one another, whether it's through our virtual B groups, people being intentional about calling one another and checking up, but also when this is all said and done and we do get back together, man, we're going to appreciate each other so much more. You know, thinking about the term deeper, I'm reminded of a story from my childhood. When I was a kid, my family, we had a, a membership to uh, the pool at one of our local colleges. And uh, it was an Olympic-sized pool, so it had like the, the swimming lanes and had the shallow end on one end and the deep end on the other where the diving boards were. And one of my favorite things to do was one, to, you know, can opener and all kinds of fun stuff off the diving board. But in addition to that, I loved to, to dive down and swim as hard and fast as I could to touch the bottom of the deep end. Now, when you swim down to the deep end, because of the buoyancy of your of your body and the pressure of the water, it's a little bit of a fight to get to the bottom. But there was this one stretch of time during our time there uh, as members of the pool where one of the lifeguards, I don't know what lifeguard would have ever done this, but I'm thankful for him, left a 35 pound dumbbell next to the edge of the deep end of the pool to which we would take that dumbbell, put it in our hand, and do a Superman dive off the end of the pool. And, and that thing would just rapidly weight assist you to the bottom of the pool. It was so fun because instead of normally like the slow fight to get down there, you just like Superman rocket all the way to the bottom and smash. There you were at the bottom before you knew it. Now, in the subject of going deeper with God, nothing is going to weight assist you going deeper in God like engaging the Bible. Today I'm going to talk to you about three types of Bible engagement. Practical engagement, emotional engagement, and missional engagement. We're going to look at the story of the Shunammite woman and Elisha from 2 Kings chapter 4. As we watch her engage Elisha the prophet, he was the man who was carrying the Word of God. They didn't have the Bible in the same way you and I did when the prophet came to town. They would say, what is the Lord saying? And so as we watch her engage Elisha, we can watch this engagement as a type of you and I engaging the Word of God. Let's pray and dive into this passage today. Father, we thank you for this example. We thank you for Jesus, the word that was made flesh. And I pray that as we engage the written word, the Logos word, we will engage with Jesus and you will take us deeper into who you are. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we look at this passage today, I am so excited to unpack this for you and look at these, these three phases of Bible engagement. Uh, the first phase, like I mentioned earlier, is practical engagement. We're going to be in chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Now there came a day when Elisha passed over to Shunem, where there was a prominent woman, and she persuaded him to eat food. You don't have to persuade me to eat food, but evidently Elisha was that kind of guy. And she persuaded him to eat food. And so it was, as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat food. She said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God passing by us continually. Please let us make a walled upper chamber and let's set a bed for him there, a table, a chair, and a lampstand. And it shall be that when he comes to us, he can turn in right there. We, we see in this passage that she, she is engaging Elisha. Saying, all right, you're passing by, you're carrying the word of God, come on, let me convince you to come get something to eat. And evidently she must have been a good cook or there was a good cook in the house somewhere because after she had convinced him to come get something to eat, anytime he passed through that area, he stopped by her place to get something to eat. Well, she engages with him and, and we can look at this passage once again uh, as a type of engaging with the word. We see her here, um, she made place for the word in her life. As, as she made a place for him to come and eat on a regular basis, as she turns to her husband and says, this guy's a prophet. 
He's a holy man of God. I perceive this about him. Maybe we should go and build him a little prophet's apartment upstairs. So they, they take a part of their, their upper deck of their house. They didn't have peaked roofs like we did. They, they had flat roofs. And so they just built a, another little cubicle up on top of the house. A place with a, a bed and a lamp and all that good stuff for him to have a place to engage. So let me make a place for the word in my life. She, she, the, the making this place for the word in her life, it took discipline. It took sacrifice and it took design. It, it, this, this wasn't something she just made this place out, for him out of happenstance. She had to say, you know, I am going to discipline myself to make a place for him. Originally, it was just a place at the dinner table. Then it became a place, uh, an actual dwelling place for him. She, and not only did it take that, but it took sacrifice. It took some uh, blood, sweat, and tears on probably the part of the Mr. Shunammite in this story, as he was probably the one pounding the nails up there. Um, it, it took some uh, sacrifice in the fact that they had to go out and purchase the, the building materials and put this all together. And it took some design. You, you see that she doesn't just say, hey, let's make a, um, a dwelling place. She, she actually kind of lines it out for him a little bit. She goes, please let's make a, a walled chamber let us set a bed in there, a table, a chair, and a lampstand. It shall be when he comes that he can turn in there. She, she's got this place all laid out. She's got the design. She's doing the interior design. Like, I've got some plans here how we're going to make place for the prophet to come by and stay. Once again, we're looking at this as typology for a making place for the word. I'm not inviting myself over to your house. This is talking about you inviting the word into your house today. Making place, making room, actually practically engaging the word of God. When I say practical engagement, I'm talking about disciplined, habitual interaction with God's word. Reading his word, studying his word. So, some of the disciplines of that could include everything from the corporate engagement to your personal engagement. Corporate engagement would look more like you attending service on a weekly basis. Right now we're doing this via uh, electronic means. In the future we are going to make up for some lost time gathering together and worshiping God, but part of your practical engagement with the Word is the corporate gathering and us opening the Word together and, and hearing the Word of God preached. A part of your corporate engagement is also not only coming and listening to somebody else teach, but the more, the more of the Bible study where everybody has a voice and we, we're studying and we're asking questions and we're listening to perspectives. Both the, the corporate expression of listening to someone preach and the, the corporate expression of the small group gathering are absolutely valuable and vital to your understanding of the Word of God. Because one, you get this uninterrupted teaching with a flow of thought and somebody who has spent time studying. The other man, you, you, you get different perspectives and you have the opportunity to raise your hand and say, I don't understand that or I disagree or this, that, and the other. And, and you have an opportunity to really, really discuss the Word of God. So I encourage you to sign up for one of those B groups. Show up on Sunday mornings, whether it's online or one day in person. Engage the Word of God corporately. Then you've got your individual engagement where you're practically engaging the Word of God as an individual, where you're saying, you know what, this is the time of day that I'm going to study the Bible. I, I've set aside this time, and I, I will pursue Him. Just, you, another personal engagement is memorizing Scripture. There, there's nothing like saying, that I, I will commit His Word to my heart that I might not sin against Him. Diving and saying, this is something I'm going to, whether it's one verse, whether it's three verses, whether it's a whole chapter, or even some people memorize entire books of the Bible. Memorize His Scripture. Engage with the Word. T take time to pray through Scripture and engage with it that way. Saying, all right, you, you read something in Scripture, you read one of His promises, instead of just thinking about it and just your life, say, all right, let me actually pray into this. How can you personally engage with Scripture? You know, in the same way that we see this lady take time to engage with, Elisha in a way that was with discipline, design, and sacrifice. I want to challenge you right now, and if this is all you get out of this whole message, is this challenge right here, it'll be well worth your time. I want to challenge you during this time, during, the, during this lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call this time that we're in right now, stay at home, all that jazz. You, as inconvenient as this is in many ways, 
you have been gifted with an opportunity to engage God's Word, go deeper in a way that the normal rat race of life with your job and the business that entails what you would normally be doing, a lot of that has been pushed aside, and you can engage His Word in a new and fresh way. I want to challenge you to make sure you're, you're stewarding this time well. And here's my challenge. In the same way she said, uh, we, we, need, we need some design here. She, she, what's your design for your practical engagement with his word? Are, are you going to say, all right, I'm a morning person, so I'm going to set my alarm a little earlier. I, I, I need to go out and, and uh, sit, out, sit under a tree and, and be in nature out in my yard. Or, or how are you going to design your practical engagement? Is there a particular book you're going to run after and you're going to you say, I'm going to really engage with the book of Matthew or the book of Ezekiel or whatever it, God's speaking to you. Begin designing your engagement now. Also, it, it required discipline. So as we look at her discipline, let's, let's bring it to your discipline. How are you saying, all right, I've got this design, now I'm going to discipline myself to follow through on this design. Also, it took sacrifice. They, they had to buy the, the building materials and, and, and follow through on it. What do you need to sacrifice for you to engage with the Word of God? But here's one of the things that, that, that it's even more critical. when, when it, Not only do I need to make room for the Word of God and, and make uh, a design and a plan and move forward with it. Here's the other question. Who are you going to talk to about it? We see here in this story, Mrs. Shunammite coming to Mr. Shunammite saying this, hey, let's do this. Let's set aside this place. Let's do this thing. Let's carry out this design. Now, she might be saying this to him for a, a variety of reasons. One, she might be saying this because he has something to add to the design. You, you never know that they might be doing a little Chip and Joanna Gaines where she's doing some interior design and he's working on the structural integrity of it. You know, you, may, maybe she's bringing it to him because he's the one who has to write the check. Maybe she's bringing it to him because he's the one who's pounding the nails. Wh whatever reason she's bringing it up to him and not just hauling off and doing it on her own, maybe it's just because they have a functional marriage and they talk about things. I don't know. But what, whatever the reason is that they are talking about, she's engaging somebody else in her engagement plan. Who can you engage right now in your engagement plan? Now, for some of you who are sitting at home, you're sitting next to your spouse and your children, you've got a captive audience right now of people to engage. And I want to challenge you after this message is over to engage them and say, how are we going to engage this week? Starting tonight, starting tomorrow morning, how are we going to engage God's Word as a family. Some of you are sitting at home, you, you don't have uh, a nuclear family there in the home. Um, you, you, you're, maybe you're single, um, maybe you live with a roommate, maybe you live alone. Uh, do you have an accountability partner, somebody that you can engage in this process? It's one of the great things about this time is I have to be more intentional in reaching out to people. You have to be more intentional about reaching out to people. Now you've got a means to which you know I've got a friend who's probably watching the same podcast, and if he's not, I can forward this to him on Facebook or YouTube, and I'll send this to him and say, hey, um, would you engage with this with me? I want to talk about my design, and I want to talk to, to you about your design. Let's engage practically the Word of God together. The terms that I'm using today for practical engagement, emotional engagement, all those sort of things, they're actually, uh, I, I didn't coin these terms myself, so don't, don't pin that to me. They actually come from a Barner research study called the Bible Engagement Project. And one of the things the Bible Engagement Project tells us is right now the, the average churchgoer in America, when we talk about being practically engaged, the, the, the surface level uh, understanding of what engaging the Bible is just the practical actually saying I'm going to engage in reading the Bible I'm going to engage in studying the Bible I'm going to engage in going to church and listening to the Bible being preached the Barna study says of the average baseline churchgoer in America 24% of us would consider ourselves highly engaged practically in the Word of God let's up those percentages the next form of engagement is emotional engagement. Let's look at verses 11 through 16. One day he came there and turned into his upper chamber and rested. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. 
he said to him to say, Now say to her, Behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Would you be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the army? And when she answered, she goes, I live among my own people. So he said, What then is there to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Truly, she has no son, and her husband is old. When he said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And then he said, At the next, at this season next year, you will embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, O man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. We see right here that Gehazi and, and Elisha are, are hanging out in the dwelling place that her and her husband had made for him. He's, man, I'm wonderfully cared for. I've been practically engaged here. Now he, he calls her in. He gives her the word of the Lord. This time next year, you will have a son. In a few more verses, you'll see that he did not lie. That actually happened. He gives her the word of the Lord. And not only does she just have a practical engagement with the word of the Lord where she writes it down, she actually emotionally responds to it. She, does, she has no children. Her, her husband is old, which uh, the read between the lines there, Gehazi is saying she doesn't have a son, and there's a good chance she's not going to have a son because of these extenuating circumstances. And he gives her the word of the Lord and says, this time next year you will be holding a son. And she's like, no man of God, please don't toy with my emotions. Don't mess with me. I, I, I could, don't, don't, don't play with my heart here. Am I really going to have a son? You're going to have a son. The word of the Lord to you is you will bear a son. She has this emotional reaction. The word of the Lord, um, it becomes the answer to her problem. The word of the Lord revealed something to her that she did not already know. She, she, could have, uh, she couldn't go about her day from that moment after the word of the Lord answers her problem, reveals to her something she wouldn't know. She couldn't go about the rest of her day just living like nothing had happened. This would affect the way she would go on and do life the rest of that day. She would go back to her husband. Could you believe what the man of God said to me? This is so crazy. This is challenging. Do we believe it? Do we don't? You know, she, all of a sudden she starts picking out, you know, uh, stuff for the baby, picking out baby rattles and diapers and whatever else that she began dreaming of because she thought she was never going to have a baby. All of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes to her and it's emotionally engaging with her and it's changing her from the inside. Emotional engagement is an often overlooked aspect of our holistic approach to engaging God's Word. But it is the driving force behind day after day picking the Word of God up and going back to it. It is the part of, of reading His Word that says, I, I have engaged with the Word of God and now I feel connected to Him. I feel connected to his word. I feel connected to what his word is to me. It is that emotional engagement. It's not, not just, you know, um, this head knowledge, okay, I've engaged, I've checked the duty off my list, but the actual, wow, God is so awesome. I'm, I, is, is, his word is suddenly solving my problem. It was speaking to my situation. Something I read today has been revealed to me that I did not know before. I'm telling you, I, I've been studying the word of God on a regular basis. For 20-some years now, I, I've got two degrees in this stuff, and I am still reading things in His Word that I'm like, wow, I never knew this, and I'll run and grab Charity. and be like, Charity, I've read this passage a hundred times, and I've never seen this before. When we engage in His Word, and all of a sudden, the, the, there's this aspect where He unlocks something to us emotionally. And we connect with his word. Your, your, your practical engagement, your discipline is absolutely vital. But that practical engagement leads to your emotional engagement with his word. This goes beyond just excitement for reading his word. But this is where I'm actually getting my answers from life from here. I, I, I'm, I'm being sustained in this. She had a problem. She didn't have a son. All of a sudden, because she emotionally engaged, and she, she first she practically engaged, and then she emotionally engaged, now her, she, she learned something she didn't know, and she had a solution in her life that she didn't have before. A son was coming.
Your practical engagement leads to emotional engagement. And the deeper and deeper you go in His Word, the closer you feel to God, the closer you feel to what He's saying, the more in love you become with who He is, the more you understand that Jesus, that the Word made flesh, and how He uh, represents God to us. And it's a, it, it, just like He told the Pharisees when they said, show us uh, the Father, he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. As I dive into the Word and I see the person of Jesus throughout Scripture, both in the actual person of Jesus showing up in the Gospels, but also the typology all through Scripture where we see the person of Jesus on all the pages of the Bible where he points forward to Christ, the Messiah. All of a sudden, I, I, I fall deeper in love with who he is. I understand, and, and I am engaged at a level. There's more than just my practical discipline. There's something turned on inside of me that, that I am engaged. And, and that, now I, I, I'm saying you know, this is impacting me on a heart level. Yeah, you know, that same survey that I quoted to you a little while ago that, that gave the baseline of how many people feel practically engaged. Interestingly enough, the, that same baseline of who feels as though they are emotionally engaged with it, if they feel highly emotionally engaged with the word, is 38% of the church feels that way. Now, we see in this story, her practical engagement leads to emotional engagement. The emotional engage, her emotional engagement then gives way to missional engagement. Watch the very last verse of this story, verse 17. The woman conceived and bore a son at the next year, as Elisha had said to her. The Word of God not only emotionally impacted her, but it completely changed her life. When she heard this word from the Lord, there were some steps of faithfulness in the process. But then after that, nine months of carrying the Word of the Lord. Now, I'm not speaking from personal experience, just from external experience watching my wife and many other women carry children. The, carrying a child changes you, right? And, and she is, all of a sudden, she has been practically impacted by this thing that she, like I said, she practically engaged with it. She emotionally engaged with it. Now, initially, it, is, it has changed her life. It has changed her worldview. She, she is different because she's carrying this. And then nine months later, when she gives birth, it completely changes Mrs. Shunammite's life and Mr. Shunammite's life. They, they now have a son. They now, completely, their worldview on life has shifted because th this, this word became flesh to them. This... Th this this thing that was just something that they were practically engaging with, emotionally engaged with, now they're missionally engaging with it, and it's com completely changing the way they view life and the way they do life. When we talk about missional engagement, missional engagement is not just simply a biblical form of evangelism, but it is a shift in a worldview. Is you saying, I see the world differently now. I engage the world differently now because I have engaged the word. And, and, and the word has been so deep and so meaningful to me that, that I believe the best thing that can happen for somebody else is that they come and know Jesus. That, that I, I have so been impacted by his word, I have practically engaged it, and my heart has been changed in the process, and now the way I live my life is different because I believe, whether it's the man across the street or the man across the world, the most important thing is that they come to know Jesus. It changes the way I live my life. It changes the way I leverage my finances. It changes the way I treat people. I'm now missionally engaged. You know, there's a study called the back to the Bible research project. And one of the stats that I found in that research is this, people who practically engage the Bible four or more times a week are 228% more likely to share their faith. 228%, that's like a lot of percents more than just 100%, 228% more likely to share their faith. Why? Because they've practically engaged with the God, Word of God four or more times. And somewhere in that process, they emotionally engaged with it. And God changed their heart. And now because God has changed their heart, they, they now view life so much more differently that it affects the practical way that they live their life because they have engaged the Word of God. Now they're engaging a world that needs His answers. They're engaging a world that needs His love. And the person who's engaging the Word is more equipped, but also more passionate. 
and they're ready to answer the call to share Jesus with their friends. The Bible engagement project that I quoted earlier about the other two forms of engagement with this third form of engagement, missional engagement, it says the national baseline average of people who felt as though they were highly missionally engaged was 15%. 15%. Percent of the body of Christ in America feels like they're highly missionally engaged. Like God has so radically changed their worldview that the way they live is different, that they're leveraging their life to see others come into the kingdom. 15% of the American church. The answer is right here, y'all. The answer is us getting into His Word, studying His Word, knowing His Word practically engaging it to the point that we emotionally engage and it changes our heart and it changes our life but it starts with that challenge that I laid out earlier I know this was my practical application for my very first point but I'm bringing it back down to the end my challenge to you is how are you going to practically engage your design your discipline your sacrifice and when you figure out what my design discipline and sacrifice is going to be the how, how am I going to discipline myself to this design of how I'm going to practically engage and how am I, what, what do I have to sacrifice to get to that place and who am I going to talk to about it? If you're watching right now on one of the social medias and you need somebody to talk to about it, say, put it right there in the comments right now. Hey, somebody hold me accountable. And somebody will click on there and say, I'll hold you accountable. And you two engage with one another, whether you have each other's phone numbers or whether you just through the process of social, uh, social media and technology can DM one another, find one another, figure out how to engage and, and hold one another accountable. Because we want you guys engaging in the Word of God because it's going to change your life and it's going to change the world around you. Jesus, the Bible in John chapter 1 refers to Him as the Word made flesh. Here's what's awesome, is you and I, as we engage the Word of God, this isn't necessarily just us being proactive, it's actually us being reactive to his initial engagement. The Word made flesh, who made his dwelling among us. Jesus, the Word of God to us, he, 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 he wrapped himself in human flesh to dwell among us so that we would know the master and creator of the universe, so we would know the Father, so we would know Yahweh, so we could look to Him and say, this is what God is like. He is God. He made His dwelling among us to engage us first so we could in, in return engage Him back. Today, if you're watching and you're not absolutely sure that you're right with God, I'm going to give you an opportunity to get right with God here in a moment. If you're watching right now and you are right with God, you are a believer, you are a child of God, you have an incredible opportunity to say, you know, I will continually respond to Jesus' initiation. Jesus initiated this engagement by coming to earth, by, by saying, I will leave the creature comforts of heaven, stretch my arms across the cross, die for your sins so that your sins can be forgiven. Not only so you don't have to pay eternal punishment for it, but also that you could have eternal life and know him in this life and in the life to come. So if you're already a believer, I encourage you to continue responding to his initiation of engagement. If you're not a believer, if you're not sure that you're right with God, I'm going to pray in a moment. If you want to make sure you're right with God, I want you to pray this with me. If you're watching on social media, I want you to put in the comments, Pastor, I'm praying this with you. I'm accepting Jesus. Put that in the comments right now. But we're going to pray, and we're going to, we're going to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin. The Bible says if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that He is Lord, we will be saved. So we're going to do that right now. If you want to make sure you're right with God, pray this with me. Repeat these words. Dear Jesus, I thank you for dying for me, for paying a price that I could not pay. When you died on the cross, you took my sins And you wore them in my place so that I can wear your righteousness so that I receive forgiveness. 
as I repent of my sin, as I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Father, forgive me of my sin. Empower me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you engaged with that, if that was your first time praying or maybe you, it was your 30th time praying that and you, you made a rededication today, like I said, let us know in the comments. Email me at pastoralvin at fireplacechurch.com. Somehow know, let us know so we can help you continue to engage with them. If, man, like I said, if you're a believer, I encourage you. In a moment, Miss Jessica's going to come and she's going to engage with the kids. And when she's done, I want you to make a plan. How are you going to engage with God? How are you going to engage with this word practically? How are you, what, what, is, what is your design? What is your discipline? What is your sacrifice? How are you going to go after him this week? I guarantee you, as we do it, you practically engage. Your heart's going to emotionally engage. And you will missionally engage and it will change everything about you. I'm so thankful for you guys. Praying for you all. If you need anything, please reach out. God bless you and we'll see you next week. Good morning, friends. It's so good to be here with you again, and I've really loved the videos and pictures that I've seen of some of the crafts that you guys have done um, uh, following these messages. So thank you guys for participating with me and getting some crafts done as well. This morning, we're going to continue talking about trusting God like we did a little bit last week. And so today we're going to talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, they were living in Babylon during the time where King Nebuchadnezzar was reigning. So King Nebuchadnezzar didn't love God. Um, he wasn't following him. He wasn't committed to him. And he decided that he was going to build idols. Now an idol is something, either an object or a person, or in these ca this case, a statue that people make and that they worship instead of God. So King Nebuchadnezzar built a gold statue that he was going to worship. And he decided that he wanted other people to bow down to his idol as well. So he told everyone, when you hear this music playing, you need to bow down and worship this idol that I have built out of gold. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did love God. And so they refused to bow down and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had made. So King Nebuchadnezzar got angry that they wouldn't bow down and they, he went and asked them if that was true. And this is how they responded. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If, you. if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up. Now, of course, this made King Nebuchadnezzar even angrier. And so in response to this, he decided that he wanted the furnace to be turned up seven times hotter than it usually was. So there's fire burning and he wanted to turn it up and make it even hotter. And then he bound up with ropes, he tied up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and then threw them into the furnace. And then he looked in and he saw them walking around with a fourth person with them. That person was God. But he said, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race, nation, or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb. Their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other god who can rescue like this. As God's people, we are called to only worship God just God and no one else. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego loved God so much that they chose to continue to worship him and serve him no matter what anyone else had to say about it. And when they chose to do that, it changed the heart of King Nebuchadnezzar. 
So there are a few things that we can learn from this. The first is trust God and everything will work out the way it's supposed to. That doesn't mean it's always going to work out the way that you want it to. But God does have a plan for you. And when you trust him, he will bring his plan forward and it will happen exactly the way that he has planned it to. The second thing is that when we confidently trust God, we are able to reach other people. As you saw in this story, the faith that the three men had led to King Nebuchadnezzar actually considering that God should be worshipped above any other God that was in the world. And finally, hold firm to what you believe. Your choice to follow God, to worship God, to serve God is more important than anything else that happens in this world around you. And God will reward your faithfulness because He longs for you to love Him. His desire is that you would choose to walk in relationship with Him. And so hold on to that and don't worry about what other people think or have to say about it because that is what is most important. Your faith in God and your identity as a child of God is the most important thing about you. And so this morning, I wanna challenge you to worship God. Today and every day, but really today, put on some music and sing and dance and just worship God with all your heart. He is worthy and he deserves your worship. And he's the only one that's worth giving your time to in the capacity that you should be worshiping him. So I challenge you to get out there in your house with your family and just worship him. And for today's craft, you're going to need a piece of paper and at the bottom of the PDF, you can print out the three figures that are on the, sec they're on the second page of the PDF and then cut those out and you will lay them down on your paper and you will take red, orange, and yellow or any combination of those colors and paint around the figures that are on the paper. So you don't need to glue them down because you're gonna take them off, but you can paint around them so then it will look like there's fire around them, like it's warm, like they're in the furnace. And then you can remove the little figures that you have on the paper and you will just see the outline of all of them. And there's also a coloring page attached. So I'm gonna say a prayer for you guys. God, I thank you that you, Father, are good. God, you are worthy, Lord, of all of our worship and all of our praise. So God, today we exalt your name. God, we lift you high. God, we choose to be your people, to follow you, and to do what you have called us to do in our lives. God, we trust you. We trust that you will bring your plans for us to fruition, God, that they will happen, Lord, because you are good and you are faithful. God, so I ask this morning, Lord, that as we worship you, God, as we choose to worship you, Lord, that you would meet with us, God, individually and as families, God, that you would just meet with us, God, and you say in your word, Lord, that where two or three are gathered, there you are, Lord. So we just thank you, Father, that your presence is real and tangible on this earth, God, that we can feel you and that you speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for spending this Sunday morning with us. I am so honored and blessed that you would spend an hour with us. And I pray that the rest of your week is amazing. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.